So it's supposed to be a traditional arcade with retro games and different things, you know, Pac-Man and pinball and all that stuff. So someone takes out one of those fancy VR goggle headset things. They want me to try it. I'm not putting that thing on my head. All your spatial awareness goes away. You can't see what's in front of you. You become disoriented. You got you got to hold these things as your hands, you know. They say that's the future, but that's not, uh, it's very, very disorienting and, uh, you know, you're not really walking, but you think you're walking and I don't know, I guess that's a, that's a thing everyone's into now, but, but, but I'm not doing it. That's not, that's not the future for me. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today I'm going to show you how you can onboard users with new autopilot devices before you give them their passwords and where you use tap Microsoft enters temporary access pass authentication. Now, let me make it very clear. If I'm putting one of those things on my head, I'm gonna, it's not gonna be good. Let's just, let me tell you that. I don't need that. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. All right, so talking about common problems, I think one thing that we've all experienced is this. Okay, this is your new user, and you're gonna give them a PC to provision with autopilot. Okay. So they are supposed to power this on, power on and sign in. Okay, but of course, the first thing it's gonna ask them for is what? Username and password. And that's what separates you from provisioning. So we have to get the user their password, we know. This. So what are our options for this? All right, so let's pretend this is the organization, right? And we can do a few things. So the first option is personal email. We can use the user's personal email address to give them a password to access their new Microsoft credentials and then, you know, go from there. The other option, of course, is SMS. So we can send them a text message. I don't know how secure that is. And again, we're kind of letting corporate data out the window, even though we could prompt them to change their password after. And of course, the last option is just to give them their, tell them their password. If they're literally there in the office, uh, give it to them, give them a post-it note. Okay, but of course, this isn't gonna work if we're remote. And, uh, you know, you can't tell them, you can't show up at their house and give them an email or a password. This doesn't even account for all the folks who are still setting up PCs for the end user without autopilot and, and signing in as them and then changing the password later. Um, you know, in the autopilot, in, in the modern management workflow, the user should be the first person to sign in. And you've heard me say this before. So how can we get around this while well, achieving a few things, right? Still making sure that if we're going to share something, we're gonna share in the most secure way possible, preferably not a password of any kind. Uh, the user has gotta be able to change it on their next login, right? Because that's what you would do with a normal password anyway. And we gotta support MFA, right? Because that's what we have to do. It's a new user, this is most likely remote. And even if it's not, uh, we have to make sure we're covering all our bases. So what's the answer to this? So the answer is something called TAP, Microsoft Temporary Access Passes. So let me show you the gist of this. The idea is we're gonna go to Authentication Methods, Policies. You see I have Temporary Access Pass here, right? And what Temporary Access Pass is, is it allows you, first of all, you can enable this, and you can allow this for all your users. You can have certain groups, I'm actually gonna do that and uh, I'm gonna leave it as optional for now. And configuring this, you have some choices. So let's take a look. The temporary access pass is a one-time code for logging in. And at that point, the user is gonna be responsible for setting their own password and MFA. So temporary access pass settings, you can set minimum, maximum, and default lifetime. So the minimum a pass should be active, I would say is 30 minutes. You're not gonna be able to do anything in less than 30 minutes. The maximum, let's do one hour. And the default, mm, we'll leave the default at 30 minutes. And if someone needs it to change, that's fine. And uh, I'm gonna leave the default. Require one-time use. I only want that passcode to be good once. So once it's used, that's it. Can't save it. Even if uh, it's within the 30 minutes, it pretty much dies after it's used. So that's what we want. Let's go ahead and save that. So I'm gonna head over to the Microsoft Admin Center. And we are gonna make a brand new user, add a user. Okay, and we are going to add Harley Quinn. So we're gonna call her Harley.Quinn. 
at rubixdev.com. Automatically create a password, require the user to change when they sign in. Absolutely. Let's give her the E5 license. Okay, let's add Harley Quinn. And she has a one-time password, but this is traditionally what I would use to provide this to her in order to sign in. But I don't want to do that. Okay, so now that we've created Harley Quinn's user account, we're going to go to all users and we're going to go find her. Perfect, there's Harley Quinn. What we want to do though, in order to enable this, is we are going to want to go to authentication methods. And we're going to add an authentication method. Choose method, temporary access pass. So we're going to leave this at the default 30 minutes. We could delay the start time. It's set to one time use. We can't change these because these are set by the global tap policy and we're going to hit add. So now she has 30 minutes for this, right? And that's my temporary access pass. So I could provide this uh, to Harley. So let me go ahead and copy this down on a notepad. All right, so I've given that to Harley and now it's time to boot up her new autopilot PC. All right, so booted up the PC. We're going to sign in as Harley Quinn. Now, notice it knows that I've triggered the temporary access pass. So I, I could click use my password instead, but I don't have one. So this makes it very easy for the user because they don't have to find where to put this. So I'm going to type that in and let's hope I can read that. It's very small to Okay, so as you can see, we got in with the temporary access pass. And now it should go through. Now it should go through and just start with the autopilot provisioning. Now you'll notice it didn't ask us to change our password, right? And that's because the way we have autopilot set up where we're going to require Windows Hello for Business to finish the sign in. So because of that, that's when we're going to be prompted to change the password for the first time and set up our MFA. Okay, so now that the provisioning has gone through, we're being prompted for Windows Hello. Okay, so you can see we're getting prompted with the more information required. So we're going to be prompted to hopefully set up MFA. Okay, here we go. And then we just proceed through uh, MFA. Next. Next. And we'll just go through that to authenticate through. So tap is kind of one of those best kept secrets, I feel like, in the Microsoft world and hopefully not so kept anymore. But the ability to uh, get something to an end user via text or email, but it's not something that, you know, if it gets out there could be as critical as a password is. Right. Because the temporary access pass has limitations. It's only good once. And uh, then you can go through and set up your MFA and change password and all that other good stuff. So it's a very secure way to onboard users, especially remotely when we're shipping them PCs. And, you know, you know, they don't have any kind of line of sight to help desk. So this makes it very accessible for them to get up and get going and ultimately keeping us all secure. So that's it for today. Uh, there is a members only video. Uh, behind the scenes for this video and that'll post around the same time uh, if you want to be a member there's a join button below if you have questions if you know you want to add some feedback to the video as always drop in the discord and we'll be seeing you